Every Saturday when my alarm goes off at like 5.30, I'm like, why do I do this? Why do I get myself up this early? If I tell my friends what I do, like why I can't sleep, have that sleepover on Friday nights or why I can't hang out on Saturday, they're like, you're crazy. Like, why would you do that? But honestly, just, I love it. It's so much fun. <laughs> I think people a lot of times have a odd conception of what speech team is. Um, it is uh, essentially breaking, um, I guess you could say, language down into about 13, 15 different categories, whether it be uh, interpretive with things like humorous interpretation or dramatic. Hey, James Hook, what are you doing? Nothing, Peter. Ooh, that's a nice watch, drop step crunch. Hey. You know, like, what do I say? What do I even say to the guy who has my husband's heart? Like, are you a smoker? No? Good. You should probably be exercising more. Or duo where you're working with another person. It's interesting in that uh, the speech convention is that whereas in a normal play you would see, you know, the two actors looking at each other, maybe touching each other, grabbing real objects, uh, it, it's like they split the scene outward. So when I'm talking to my partner, Arnie, who's right next to me, I'm looking straight ahead. Do you know if I'm married, gay, straight, whatever? Listen, you're an employee, okay? And this, this is about me. Everything here is about me. If you don't like that, be my guest, leave. You don't know anything about me. You know, I'm a painter, don't you? Yeah, I suppose. Have you ever once asked to look at my work? No, why would I? You spend your life in search of real human beings. I don't think you'd recognize a real human being if you were standing right in front oh, of yeah? me. Oh yeah, what is a real human being, huh? Me. My parents died when I was seven. I spent my whole life in foster homes, shuffling around a lot. That's a real human being. Oh. And there are also public address categories. So there's like oratory. You would hear a lot of oratories in real life. It's like a persuasive speech. Basically, we are a generation that doesn't actively solve its problems. It seems that more and more we are putting down the protest signs and instead just passively picking up our iPods. A category called creative, which is basically writing your own piece, and it's basically like writing a little play. Hello, ma'am. You seem like you're a bit confused. Can I help you? Yeah, um... How much is this here, oil bar here? Well, uh, it's uh, the 100 ounce is $23, and the 200 ounce is 48. Yeah, okay, so I was wondering, if I took this oil, and hypothetically, I put it on my cheating boyfriend's car, and light it on fire, would it burn? <laughs> well, I mean, yes it would, but hypothetically it's illegal, and I would have to turn you in. Oh, you gonna turn me in? Oh, you gonna turn me in, huh? Okay, okay. Better watch your back, girl. So the typical speech kid probably wakes up at about 6.30 in the morning, crawls out of bed, puts on their suit, and hops onto the bus or car or however they get here. Uh, show up at a school, go to the cafeteria. They get their room assignments and codes, and hopefully go rehearse if they're good, <laughs> and actually listening to their coaches. And then you go to your first round, which will consist of about six or seven competitors and a judge, whether it be a parent volunteer or a coach from another school. And you just take turns giving your speeches to the judge. The judges give you a rank anywhere from one to five. One is the best, five is the worst. We are disappointed. They do that three times. And then there is, you know, postings, which is where big things come down from the walls or whatever that list who did well enough to break to either honor finals, which is uh, basically the bottom seven of the top 14, and then finals, which is the top seven. So that round happens, people who didn't break go and watch rounds, and then there are awards where you find out how people did. And in first place, with 227 points, the team of Egan. Egan's reputation is one of being a very successful school, but I think another interesting part of our reputation is not only are we successful and that we win a lot of awards, but I think people also know that we're classy about our success. You know, that's a really big thing that all of the coaches emphasize that one of the biggest things that you learn in speech is how to deal with being successful. So I think we have a reputation for that too. We are well known around the state as like, oh dang it, Egan, they're so good. They don't like rank you nationally anymore, they just, you know, give awards for the top teams, but based on the points we won last year and we won the year before, they just don't make that official. And then, what's happened to you? 
I, I fell into a deep depression <laughs> that I've never escaped. Life has no meaning to me now. I, I can't taste food, I can't enjoy the company of my dog, and I joined the Bloods. <laughs> Basically, my entire life has become completely meaningless. That is terrible. I know. I believe I will die alone. I'm sure you will. <laughs> In this type of environment with speech, you can start at the bottom and then just completely rise to the top. A lot of activities and a lot of uh, sports and other co-curriculars, it's really for that set personality type. Like robotics is for like the sciencey people and uh, lacrosse is for the athletic people, while speech is for all types of people. Like if you're not very good at expressively speaking, you can be in a category like discussion. And if you're if you don't really know a lot about politics but are really funny, you can be in humor. Or if you're not funny, you can be in poetry. You know, it's just really got something for everybody. You are doing something that I think for more people will benefit you in the future, if that um, makes sense. Uh, sports, a lot of times, you're not going to get many athletes coming out of high school that are going to go on to be professional athletes. That's just kind of the breakdown of it. Some do, but a very small percentage do, whereas speech is something that I think that no matter who participates, uh, you're going to benefit from it because you're getting up in front of people and speaking and having to be confident in yourself. I mean, it really takes something special to get up in front of a bunch of people that you don't know and talk for 10 minutes. I think people say their number one fear in life is public speaking, so. Being able to do that at the age of 14, 15, that's incredible in its own right. I mean, it's, it's weird to me when people, they don't like reading in front of the class, because to me that's like no big deal. You know, reading in front of the class, I performed in front of 3,000 people last year, like whatever. My name is Merlin and I happen to be a wizard. How do you do? How do? Oh, for the love of God. <laughs> Oh my God. How breakfast? Do you like peaches? Oh, yes, very much indeed. Good. They're scarcely in season. Mushrooms on toast, melons and cream, grilled perch, deviled chicken, piping hot brown trout, uh, boiling coffee. Ouch. Here, have some mustard with that. The reason that I do speech, which has you know a lot of qualities that are somewhat abnormal and for, for an outsider wouldn't seem to be incredibly appealing, is that really you, you, you just love it, you just enjoy it. You have to kind of like performing. I mean, let's be honest, I mean, we all like attention. <laughs> and speech is just another way for me to like be successful through goofing off and like talking, which is something I just love to do. I'm a kid who just like likes attention and I like to be noticed and I like to speak and I like to communicate and speech just lets me do that. It taught me that you know my opinion matters and knowing how to express myself in an effective way is important and that's the sort of skill that will help you for the rest of your life. Speech gives you confidence which is what everybody needs to succeed. You see Louise, I'm a very solitary person, shunned all my life, but when I saw you in the park it was like I had a new companion. My desire. And suddenly I wasn't so alone. I have returned with my things. Luis, what is he doing here? You two know each other? Ah, Luis, I figured this would be a good time to tell you, um, I am a hairdresser and I colored that man's hair twice. <gasps> lies, <laughs> filthy, filthy lies. And I will tell you one other thing, Luis. That man is only here because he wants to explore your body. This is true. How about you? Speech has probably helped me to grow as a person more than any other activity or anything I've really done throughout school, including school itself. I've become confident with you know, just a very simple act of speaking. Uh, being a freshman, I was not a very articulate person, and I still struggle with that, but I have the confidence now to at least you know, go forward with it and try to no, solve that problem. The Congressional Research Service found that the average age of a senator in Congress is the highest it's been in US history, 63 years old, with eight below the age of 50 and only one below the age of 40. This absence of youth is reflective of a generation that is perfectly content with letting their older counterparts take the reins for them, instead of making decisions for themselves. Granted, I know we won't be electing an 18-year-old fresh out of high school anytime soon, but if a 63-year-old Austrian bodybuilder can be elected the governor of California, 
I see no reason why we can't have a greater impact, political or not, by the time we're 30. My drama is about um, a heart transplant. And um, my friend who passed away actually died because her heart um, failed, but she got to live seven years longer than she was supposed to because um, she did get a heart transplant. Come here. I'm going to listen to you, to your heart. Okay. Sometimes that can be hard that I have to think about that when I'm giving a speech, but um, it is healing in a way, you know, that giving my drama, it felt so good, but at the same time, it hurt so badly, but it was like a good thing, you know. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> oh my God, I hear him. <laughs> oh my God, I can hear my husband. <laughs> oh my God. Um, <laughs> would you hold me? So speech to me is more than just, you know, bringing home a trophy at the end of a tournament or, you know, the ranks or the suit. It's, it's a lot more to me than that. You know, it's, it's helped me through, it's helped me through some of my, you know, hardest moments in high school, so. Philip, it's Rothko. I'm taking the paintings back. You can keep the money. Good luck to you, buddy. <laughs> Now, now you are Mark Rothko. You're fired. <laughs> but I thought you said You're that. fired? I mean, I don't know about some people, but at least for me and a lot of people I know, speech is really <laughs> what's kept me in high school or kept me from just getting, I don't know, disillusioned with all the, the, the same kind of schedule of school and, and feeling like it's meaningless and all of that, you know. A lot of people feel like that when they're in their teenage years. I think speech, you get to do something that you really care about because you get to, you know, pick pick a, a speech or you, you can you can even write a speech that you feel truly passionate about. Two years I've been here and you expect me to walk out just like that. Listen, you're too needy, all right? You're too damn needy and I don't need it. I don't need your need. If since you're seven, you're looking for a home, well, pal, honestly, I'm sorry, but this isn't it. Come on, Dr. Fraud, you can do better. Why? Because I don't need an assistant anymore. No because you talk way too much. So do you. Because you have a lousy taste in art. No. Because I'm sick of you. No. Because your life is out there. Listen, kid, you don't need me anymore. <laughs> yeah. You, you need to find your contemporaries and get out there and make your own life. Make your own world. Make them look. Okay? Okay. Make something new. Speech is what I do. It's like, I do other activities, I do like theater and stuff, and I like it, but speech is, when I think of speech, just like even thinking about it, it gets me so much happier. It's just such a great activity. It's the best thing I think I've ever done with my life. <laughs>